Welcome to the film cast review of Alex Garland's Civil War. I'm going to read the plot summary from the internet. In a dystopian future America, a team of military embedded journalists races against time to reach Washington, D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. All right, let's just get into it, folks. Devinder Hardwar, what did you think of this movie? So I did love it. And I didn't expect to because um, unlike you guys, like I've been watching the trailers for this and I've been like anticipating like what was coming. And let me just say just the pitch for this movie, the early trailers were just like, that is the stuff ripped from my nightmares from later this year. You know, like that's the stuff that, that could happen around the election time. And it just feels so like we're so close to this. It's almost too soon to even be exploring an idea like this. And I wondered if Alex Garland could pull it off. I think the dude is a genius. I've loved pretty much all of his projects except for men. Men certainly had me worried because that was sort of like, I think he had some interesting ideas there and he thought he was exploring that, but uh, it felt like he didn't quite focus on whatever the main concept of that movie was supposed to be. It just felt a little too obtuse for me. Um, whereas this, I think, is kind of fascinating. Um, it's a horror movie. Like it's a, it's a terrifying look at something that feels very possible in America today um it's getting a lot of flack for for being supposedly apolitical and i don't think it actually is and we can talk about some of this stuff in spoilers because i do think like there are things you can glean from what is being said here or the portrayal of the president and how things go down like there are tidbits of information you could pull here but i think what's interesting is that he does make a movie where a liberal a liberal person or progressive person watching this and a conservative person watching this can both come away with their own ideas for how maybe the civil war came about and how things went down. Um, so that is kind of interesting. Uh, for me, it's uh, what's really powerful. It's, it's just, it is about the dehumanization of war. And I also think it's a somewhat hopeful take about what the crazy people, the truth tellers and potentially journalists um, could do to help. It is both. It's a movie that's really cynical. Like, that's the thing it is really cynical about the possibility for them to do that. But these people who I align myself, like I do journalistic work, certainly not to the level of this. I'm not a war reporter, but I do share that belief that there have to be people who are, who are out there trying to seek out the truth and trying to share it with everybody with the, I don't know if it's a true hope. I don't know if it's like actually a thing, but with the hope that maybe the stuff they document could change the world or change people's minds or something. Um, I feel like my main takeaway from this movie is like, we, we may just be doomed, but the truth sellers will keep trying. And in a weird way, I found that hopeful because right now many things are making me feel hopeless. So yeah, I love this movie. Um, certainly there's a lot you can um, argue about, like in terms of what it portrays, it definitely, it took footage from like, um, you know, conservatives that we don't we don't want to see stuff from but i also think like it's doing really interesting things here i will say alex garland is not helping himself with his press tour because the more he talks about this movie i think the less interesting his own ideas are but what he's created is a fascinating and i think um i don't know important work of art for america today wow uh fascinating i I agree with you about the part where it's cynical. I, I kind of disagree about many of the takeaways you had. It depends on, on how you define hope and what right. you find hopeful. Right. Like, that's like, the I did thing. not find it. I found it incredibly bleak and not hopeful. It is at bleak. All. Um, but and in fact, like, I, I think I, me and fact, him. It's like, anti hope, I would argue. But anyway, Jeff it is gonna, ultimately anti. Like, we can talk about <laughs> right, this in spoilers. Right, right. But yeah. I, I, Garland's stuff, like, you look at the end of Ex Machina or something, like, he almost looks at something like an alien looking at humanity, mm -hmm. right? The, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hope is a really strange thing to him. Right, right. Jeff Kanata, your thoughts on Civil War? Well, Dave, I guess you could say my thoughts on Civil War are best summed up in the form of a limerick. All right, let's hear it, Jeff. Actually, I have two. Whoa. Yeah, I had a hard time this are week. Are they warring the limericks, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, one on one side. <laughs> well, it's a blue limerick and then a red limerick. No, I, I, I jest. Um, here's the first one. So Garland makes the decision to never explain the division. But when life gives you lemons, just watch Jesse Plemons. <laughs> the why ain't so hard to envision. Mm. <laughs> Uh huh. Plemons uh -huh. is real good in this movie. Plemons is real yeah, good. Yeah, he is. Good. He's awesome. Not in a lot of. I wonder how he got attached to this movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah. His wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what a power couple limerick. those two are. Yeah. If you're keeping political score, 
The point is the horrors of war. What these characters do, their detached point of view, is what I wish it tried to explore. Mm. So I, 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 it's fascinating hearing Devinder talk about it. Yeah. I also came away really appreciating the movie and I, I thought it was an incredible movie and one I'd recommend people see. It is harrowing. It is bleak. It is, I mean, I came out of it depressed. Um, mm -hmm. It is, uh, it's an endurance test in a lot of ways. And you really, it, the movie is almost, it, it, I mean, it's a road movie in a lot of ways. Yeah. And like yeah. any road movie, even comedic road movies, it's sort of episodic right? It's like this thing happens and then we're in this place and this thing happens. And it's almost like a series of short stories mm -hmm. that, that, you know, are interconnected or just sort of strung together. Yeah. Um, and I think each of those little short stories is extremely powerful mm -hmm. and extremely compelling where I think the movie comes up short for me is not in its quote unquote, a political nature or it's uh, lack of sort of coming down on a side I, I think that criticism misses the point to a certain extent mm -hmm. because what, what, where I think it comes up short is in the central characters that we are spending the most time with this in this movie, the people who are on that road trip, the journalists, um, the movie seems to be playing at or teasing a uh, an observation about what it is to observe, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, the people who stand back and don't uh, are trying to be impartial and just observe what's their role, right? What, what, what is, what is that notion of, I am simply here to record it. I am not going to be involved in it. And where does that line sit? And I just don't think the movie has any teeth in that mm -hmm. regard, right? In that, notion that it seems to want to wrestle with this, this, like, how much do you involve yourself? How much, how much of, of you is inherently part of the reporting? How much of you is inherently part of the observation, but it never quite gets there for me. That said, I don't think that I came away thinking the movie failed. I, I because everything in it is so powerful and so well executed. I mean, it really, there are sequences that will be in my imagination for a long time that feel so visceral and moving and intense. There, there is an impact to all of it that is undeniable. And you do feel like you are inside an all too plausible reality mm -hmm. of violence and aggression and blind hatred that I do think, I don't know if it's a mirror, but it certainly is a signal flare in a lot of ways. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a warning sign. And I think for that it, it succeeds, but I don't think on a, like a kind of pure movie level, it succeeds for the characters that I'm actually following. Like it's, it's, it's more about the world and, and, it really does traffic in, and I think the advertising campaign, the marketing campaign around it has trafficked in all of the unrest that we all feel no matter what side of the political aisle you're on. And the, and the movie really isn't that. It's a different thing. It's mm -hmm. an, it is still a powerful thing. And I think it is still worth seeing and will affect you. But in a different way than what I think is being advertised. And, and I, and I, and separate from that, I think it kind of fails on a certain level of just pure, like character, uh, payoff. And yet for all of that, I do think it's a worthwhile movie and a, and a powerful one. Yeah. I mean, it also gives us a glimpse at how people will willfully ignore everything happening around them. It yes. shows oh. us how people yes. can, will still come together because you kind of have to, like it is all those facets of what happens when war hits a country. And I think that perspective of it, I don't know. I found really, really meaningful, really that, sad. That, yeah. that level of, um, 
business as usual mm-hmm. or sort of like the mundanity of 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 war i yeah. think lands in a different way having gone through covid yes you know where we all were like this is bizarro world but also i i'm still taking my kids to the park or what you know whatever i'm still we still need to like have life right. you know we have so like I, trailers with body bags in them in yeah. new york city but exactly. like people are still like going to the coffee shop you know yeah. like i've also yeah. but i've been to places where it's more like outright we're not even going to think about it it's yeah. different from even being in the middle of it and acknowledging everything that's happening but corners of georgia in places i've traveled is just like yeah people just don't didn't care just completely ignored it and yeah that yeah that felt that rang true as well yeah I think the three of us have like the same overall reaction to this movie, but like very different specific reactions. Like I also think it's worth watching. I think Mm -hmm. there's some sequences that are really well done. Alex Garland is really good at directing kind of horror thriller sequences and he's pretty good at directing action sequences. And that's like, not, you know, not a lot of his movies have not been like actiony, right? Like, yeah. Um, Ex Machina and Men and um, and Annihilation have not had a ton of action in them. Annihilation, possible exception, but like, uh, there are some like straight up action scenes in this movie, and they are really well done, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Like thrilling, you're on the edge of your seat, you're gripping your chair, you know, like just really yeah. well done stuff. Cass is also great, as you guys have discussed. Kirsten Dunst plays the protagonist essentially. And she does a really good job of convincing you that she is a character that has seen some shit in her life. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Plemons, huge highlight of the movie for me. You know, uh, all the cast does a great job. So, like, overall, I'm, like, you know, pretty positive on the movie. But I am really irritated by the movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I think that I mostly agree with Jeff this is a movie that is not about it's a movie called civil war. It's not about the civil war. Like, and that's pretty weird. I think, uh, to have a movie to invoke all this imagery, to have a fascist president and all this stuff and to invoke all that stuff. And then to not really have that much to say about the specific politics in America that are creating this, the potential for this situation. Yeah. I've thought about that. In my opinion, in my opinion. Now, now, it is about other things that are interesting. And in my opinion, it does a good job of being about those things. Mm -hmm. It's about how war compresses things, right? Like it's not when you are in war as the characters in this movie are, no one talks about the specifics because it doesn't really matter. Right. And like that guy is shooting at me. Right. So I have a guy shooting at me. I got to shoot at him back. You know, like that's all that matters. Right. And, um, and that is like a, a good observation and a good insight that like is worth, uh, uh, sort of pulling out of this. Uh, the other thing, as as uh, both of you have mentioned, is that it's really about the role of the observer and what that is. And I actually disagree with Jeff that I think I think it did a pretty good job of, of doing that. You know, there's a there's a line early on in this film uh, about what the role of the war photographer is, and somebody says like, you know there's there's basically like a young apprentice in this movie who's mm-hmm. like tagging along with uh kirsten dunn's character and so you know like why uh, i can't believe you just took a picture of that you know like somebody says something like that and then it's like it's not like didn't, didn't you w- want to help didn't you want to do x you know and it's like it's not our job to ask questions it's our job to take the pictures and then let other people ask the questions right mm-hmm. And but that, I think that I think yeah. that notion is never interrogated in the well, uh, I, I in think spoilers, is, Jeff. Yeah, that's, that's where I disagree with Jeff. There's it's a like, thing that happens. That, I, but yes. I think I think this is the the movie is trying to do literally that. Mm-hmm. Like the mm-hmm. movie is trying to be like here here is like what uh, an imagined scenario of what might happen, yeah. and it's up to you to mm-hmm. ask the questions. Detached like, you, to we, something, I'm not going to tell Garland you. I'm not going to really tell you what well. I think yeah. about any of this shit. It's up to you to you know. And so and I you know again you might find i i find that somewhat annoying at least for a variety of reasons um but i do think like the movie does a pretty decent job of like of being the mm-hmm. observer that the characters in the movie are as well so i, w- I would rather yeah. take this than something like uh, a movie i was thinking of while watching this is don't look up <laughs> you know a movie that is specifically like right. hey you you watching this you think this is dumb too i also think this is dumb we both think this is dumb 
and yeah. all your worldview totally supported. I'm going to spoon feed <laughs> you everything you want. And to me, that is the dumbest thing you could do. And I'm very glad this movie did not even try to do that. Alex Garland as a, as a director and as a writer is good at detachment, good at detaching the characters, I guess, from, you know, behaviors we typically expect, but also like good at detaching himself as an artist too. Um, it's a tough thing to deal with. And I will say like, I don't, there are things you can read into what is in the movie but it's just not spelling it all out for you. You know, like there are things we can talk about, about the president that is in this movie played by Nick Offerman. Yeah. yeah, So let's, let's get to spoilers. Let's talk about some of this stuff. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Let me just say, you know, I I don't, you guys know, I don't agree with the characterization of don't look up as being as insipid as you do. But that said, I do agree, agree with the, the general uh, observation there, which is, I do think that a lot of people, at least sort of in the, comment sphere uh have taken this movie to task for like not echoing their personal world exactly. view back at them yes and I, I i do think that is to this movie's credit that it isn't doing that and i think that it's a really interesting it's a really interesting line to walk that exactly what you're saying dave which is garland is doing the thing the characters in his movie are mm-hmm. attempting to do which is hey isn't all of this absurd isn't I- all yep. of this horrible, you know, uh, and, and any way you slice it, if we get to this point and we're almost to this point, this has all gone horribly wrong. And I think that's, you know, I think I, that's, I don't agree. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of disagreements going on in the podcast today. That's cool. But like, I don't agree that like, certainly not my main issue is that it does not echo my worldview. My issue is the movie does not have a worldview despite invoking extremely loaded imagery and concepts. Right. Right. Um, If it had a worldview, then I I could at least respect it more. Um, But the problem I think is that the loaded concepts sort of uh, the baggage of it assumes a worldview. Mm-hmm. Right. And, but the movie just isn't interested in that. It's, it's doing something completely right, different. Right. I, so I, I, again, I have more to say of this. Let's get the spoilers. Yeah. Okay? Right, then we'll talk about it. So let's get the spoilers for this. But I just want to say, I don't agree with Jeff's characterization of like that. That's my, one of my main, I'm issues not, the movie. Yeah. I'm not attributing yeah. that to you. I okay, said yeah, the yeah, comments. Yeah. Sure. 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 I specifically right. didn't include you. All right. Well, anyway, let's get the spoilers for this movie starting right now. I mean, I am like, I think that, the idea of oh it, it doesn't matter how we got here like it's all bad like that's that's lit- literally I think what the movie is saying like, I don't I don't think that's true okay I don't the, think but the, it's just not map, telling you the yeah. map that the they they released of uh, who the different factions in the civil war are is like really hard to square with what is actually going on in America today right sure. like yeah it's like uh, California and Texas are the Western forces. And like, yeah. it's like, really, would they really be united if this was actually happening? Really? Yeah. Like, and there's like a Southern Alliance with like it's, Florida. It's non- and it's non- yeah. I think it's nonsense. Like my yeah. opinion is it's nonsense. And, mm-hmm. uh, well, I that think al- uh, yeah. that, that allows you to not pay attention to the specifics of the movie and focus more on the stuff that we already talked about. Like mm-hmm. what is the role of a war photographer? What is the impact of war? How do people benefit mm-hmm. and profit from war? How do people tell stories about war? Like, that that's ultimately what the movie ends up being. I, th- I think importantly, the movie itself does not do much of that explaining, right? They talk about Correct. the Western front, but you have to look at like the marketing materials or Garland's exactly. own yeah. like explanation of these things. And I am honestly like I've, I've seen some of that. I disagree. I think the movie works better as the thing he created without any of the background because I, I can kind of separate it because what we are watching here, we're in spoilers, is um we're seeing a Trump coded president leading America into a third term, several states separating and being like, we we cannot support this insanity. That president, what we know in the movie, has attacked American civilians with airstrikes and other things. So other, some parts of America are responding to that. So I don't think it is an entirely like, doesn't matter how we got here. The, th- the things you can like read from it is we're introduced to this guy like trying to, um, working on a speech, right? Working on a speech about the the, the biggest the biggest accomplish, uh, accomplishment in history or something like that, coming up with big words to talk about the thing he's doing. And I find, you know, I found that Trump coded and to yeah. me, it just, it feels like that is kind of how we got here, but he doesn't need to be like saying exactly like 
this guy is your Trump analogy, right? This guy is your Trump parallel. You should all feel this way about it. It's more like we're responding to everything he's doing. And the things he's done, I think, are like legitimately in the film. I, I could it's see the country point. reacting it, in this way. It's yeah. not a bad point to be right. And also, like, you could also bring up Jesse Plemons' character, who I think is clearly coded as like a white nationalist, right? Like, it, and and, and so be. it's like it's the mm-hmm. movie has those things, like, or, but they're very around the edges. And as you said, like, it's it's so much, you, and you can read in, you know, and, and like create a whole version of it. But like, it's, that's you as the viewer bringing that. And I I, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think okay. I'm looking right. at. I'm just looking at the text there. I mean, we are, yeah, we are reading into the things into the text, but I think that's, what's fascinating about a movie like this and being truly observational, right? Like the scene with, um, I think one of the most compelling scenes in this movie is the one about when they're trapped behind the truck and there's those two soldiers, the snipers. And the explanation is like, we, we kind of don't know exactly why this is happening, but they're shooting us. We got to shoot them. Also fascinating to see like they're, they're dressed with like colored hair and painted painted nails and stuff too. Like we don't know what to read about those soldiers, but clearly like they have, um, you know, they're not like what you would imagine as a typical soldier or something. So I think the movie is telling us things in a lot of ways, but it's not being explicit about it. And that, I mean, that's a problem. That can be a problem. I, at times. I yeah. think honestly that the, you know, we're, we're, it's, it's natural because the marketing trafficked in this and yes. and, and leveraged mm-hmm. it. It's natural to think, oh, this is trying to tell us what the day after tomorrow looks like, True. right? This is this is a plausible, you know, near future uh, horror horror show. But the movie is really attempting to establish a fictional world mm-hmm. that does not that yes. does not pattern onto our world. Yes, in, in any in any way. And I think that I totally understand how that could be frustrating to you, Dave. And I think frustrating to a lot of people. And for me, at a certain point, I just sort of let that go and realize, oh, the right. movie just isn't interested in commenting on our world's our world in that regard. Our world mm-hmm. specific political environment issues, right yes. environment exactly right. yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it really is making a sort of broader point that uh, I'm not even sure is a hundred percent successful, but right. is, is it, right. di- it's, it's a different, it's a different movie than everything about it would lead you to believe. Yes. Which is, Agreed. I think part of the problem is that they were, cer- the marketing team was certainly happy to yeah. ride the wave right. of yes. social, uh, Oh, here we go. This is the movie that's going to tell us what it's all going to be like. And it's like, that's not that, this is not that movie at all. Yeah. Um, it, the movie, it's, it's, by the way, got a B minus cinema score, which is uh, pretty rough. You know, like I think, rough, I think a lot doing of, incredibly well at the box office. W- w- like, yeah, let's see what the second week in numbers are like. You know, but I think I think that yeah, it's it's one of A24's most successful box it, office movies. Yeah, right? I mean, um, we can't discount that. I don't know where it's yeah, going to yeah. fall. I, I'm that really first curious. Yeah, I'm really curious insane. what the drop's going to be because I think yeah. like a lot of people, Jeff, saw the marketing campaign, thought it would be about this, and it's really not about that. You know, in my right. opinion. Right. And so, but I um, think that's, that's kind of fascinating. Like I would rather have this than a straight up polemic. Right. I think that's my main thing. I I went into a theater to see this and it was the, one of the more crowded screenings I've been in for something that like a 10 30 PM on a Saturday or no Friday screening. And I live in Georgia. I don't know what people are assuming. I don't know what they're coming in to see. I'm surrounded by like 10 different gun clubs and shooting ranges and things like that like i see trump flags everywhere in my neighborhood all over the place so i was thinking how weird to have a movie where we can all come in maybe they don't feel like um conservatives will not feel specifically attacked but maybe it sparks an idea you know in them about something like to me that is powerful and interesting it was interesting we could all just come to this movie and like maybe have our own interpretations of things like they reference an antifa massacre and that's mm. all they say. Yeah. Is that a massacre of Antifa? Yeah, of Antifa, or by, by Antifa? Antifa? Like, it's not right, right. <laughs> that's, that's all they say. Right. And then you as a viewer, it'd be like, well, you're, maybe you're reading your own thing into it. And yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I, I found, found so, that That's what I found, yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah. glad you guys, like, thought that was cool. Like, I, I was just so profoundly irritated by it because it just, it just throws in, sure. it's like this blender of all this, like, 
political buzzword, like hot button issues of like fascist third prime president, Antifa massacre, like all this stuff. And then it has, it, it doesn't make any statement about any of those issues specifically. Jeff, the alternate, you know, sometimes you like to imagine like alternate universe, like if this movie did this thing differently, like imagine if this movie was about a completely fictional war between the Centrons and the Sismeds, like these two warring factions in, and it took place a hundred years in the future. It'd be like, Okay, and it's it can it would be able to retain ninety nine percent of what it is trying to say about war and battle and the observer. But it wouldn't so be on. today. But my like, well, okay, it doesn't you know whatever it doesn't need to be a hundred years of fear. But my then, point is like my point yeah. is like okay, it could, it could still say the same things, but it uses all this loaded imagery in ways that I think are like not irresponsible, is too strong, but it's just like. If you're going to do all that, you should at least try to say something about it, in my opinion. In, in, in my opinion, it doesn't. It has things to say about other stuff, as we've already discussed. So anyway, I, I will. I know no, I've been harping on that. I'll I stop, honestly I'll don't. Yeah. I don't really disagree with that. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's a weird thing to leverage all of yeah. all of that stuff and and be like, hey, it's available. It's all out right. there. All, I yeah, can well, use it. Right. But it's like, well, what are you using it for? Well, I'm using it to talk about these journalists. And they're like, it's like, wait, what? Because what? <laughs> right, right, it's right. pretty freaking vital to the rest <laughs> of us. You know, like. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as you, you know, as you said, Devinger, he's like kind of like an observer. Like, oh, like all this, mm-hmm. all this weird stuff is going on in America. Let's just throw all this in there. That'll, that'll be exciting. He's also exciting. like. I think I think his own comments are kind of betraying this, but he does strike me from my own conversations with him is like he he feels like a human being that does not live on our plane of existence, right? Like he is he yeah. is like one of those like genius level dudes who is like just out there thinking weird thoughts on his own. Like he he is talking to him is kind of kind of weird and wild because he is just like endlessly fascinating as a person. So like as an artist, like I, I just. I give him the benefit of the doubt. I shouldn't do that all the time. Um, and his own comments are kind of like, I don't know, like kind of dumb around this movie. But also, I think he's an interesting enough artist that he is still hitting at something that I find to be really fascinating here. Like, Jeff, you're saying it's not saying anything about um, the journalist like not being part of the story. Well, Kirsten Dunn's character does become part of the story at the end. That amazing sequence where she's like, I can't, I got to save the girl. Yeah. The stupid girl who keeps getting into into situations that har- harm all of our friends, unfortunately. But her final act is to betray the thing that she was saying the entire time is like, just observe. She couldn't just observe, you know, and that yeah. whole sequence. Well, she I was found, like, are you going to take a picture of, of, of my death? Yeah. Which, you know, Kirsten Dunst could have done. Yep. And instead, she steps in and gets her picture taken at her time and of death. What an amazing uh, just way of portraying that. It's an too. amazing moment. But again, yeah. I like I I personally didn't know what to take away from that. What do you like, what do you make of it? I, well, I I think I think of this a lot. What do you make of the end of Annihilation? What do you make of right. the final decisions of Ex Machina? I, like, I, have, right. I have stuff he to tends make of it. Do that. I have stuff to make of it. First it's of not all, clear. Yeah, he's, yeah, no, he's not. Well, yeah. OK, I, I have I have an interpretation. Yeah. First of all. There's a line that Jared Leto says in Panic Room oh boy. that really sticks with me. <laughs> so uh, if you uh-huh, want to watch uh-huh. uh, Civil War, first <laughs> yes. watch Panic Room. Yeah, yeah, first so, watch Panic so Room. There's this, so for those who don't know Panic Room, David Fincher's movie, like Forrest Whitaker uh, like leads a crew uh, with Jared Leto and they break into this house to try to steal some shit out of it, right? And... Uh, and Forrest Whitaker used to work in like security, right? And so that's how mm-hmm. he's able to get into the room. And he says, you know, I spent most of my career trying to lock up guys like us or, or trying to prevent guys like us from getting into this house, you know? And Jared Leto's like, oh, it's so ironic. Yeah, you know, like, get over yourself. That's literally what played through my head at the very end of this movie. When <laughs> I mean, like, when he's like, oh, she was supposed to take it. And it's like, oh, it's so ironic that Kirsten Dunn. Yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like the attitude you're going into this, because you're so pissed off by what this movie, no, like, you I'm sound not, irritated. Pissed, I'm not by. pissed off. I'm not pissed off. Uh, irritated, yes. You're not, irritated by, like, so I'm just. And by the way, by the again. way, like, I'm not, I wasn't the only one in the theater that felt that way about that scene. Like, I, so okay. someone behind me was like. Oh, she's the like literally said out loud. Forrest oh. Whitaker sat behind me and went, "Oh, it's so ironic." No, it was Jared Leto. Yeah. It had to be no, Jared somebody Leto. in the theater was literally like, "Oh yeah, she's the w- oh she's the one that's gonna get killed." You know, like literally someone in behind me in the theater said that out loud. So like, it's not don't connect. I mean, did it to they my say it overall... sarcastically? I'm not. I'm not asking for a group opinion here. I'm just saying like, I found that kind of compelling and powerful. Sure, well, that's all. So I think this movie actually ultimately is. As you said, Devinder, at the beginning, extremely cynical about the role of journalists. Yes, 
Uh, it's like the the idea is that the the younger character in the movie, um, played by Kaylee Spanny, uh, Spanny from Priscilla, um, yeah, Priscilla is the character's name, right? Um, mm-hmm. j- no, uh, Jessie? Kaylee Spanny, yeah, Jesse that's Priscilla, it? yeah. I'm seeing Jesse as the name of the character online, but maybe that's yes, not right. Yes, yes, yes. She I'm played Priscilla from Priscilla. Priscilla. Oh, she Priscilla. played Priscilla. Priscilla. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, the character Jesse. The idea is that like, oh, she had like the whole movie. Kirsten Dunst is trying to harden that character and be like, mm-hmm. you can't ask questions, you can't do this, yes. you can't. Do, you just got to take the picture and like divorce emotion from it and be willing to like absorb all this shit. And at the end, she finally makes that transition. And I think we are meant to be in some ways horrified by it. Like she's not, um, when she sees Kirsten Dunst die, she doesn't like, I don't think she weeps for her. If I recall I mean, correctly. there is no yeah. time and There's her no Kirsten time. Dunst right. partner yeah. right. doesn't just, have time to either. Like they're, the job is to get that photo. Yeah. They just got to keep moving. Right. And yeah. so like, so it's, it's about how dehumanizing it is to put people in this position where they are the observer. It's mm-hmm. about like what it takes from you. Yeah. And I think that moment is the capstone of that idea. Which is further augmented in the very next scene when they storm the thing, they rip the president out of his chair, and before Wonderful they deliver sequence. the killing blow, like yeah. I think Wagner Mora, right? Wagner Mora's yeah. character leans out, like, wait, 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 don't shoot him yet. Don't shoot him yet. I, this is why I'm here. <laughs> Need the quote. And he's like, I've not written a single word for this <laughs> entire movie. I got to do some work. Right. And he's like, yeah. And he said, uh, 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 Ron Swanson's like, please Ron don't Swanson. let them kill me. Yes, Ron Swanson. And he's like, that'll do. And then it's like... Well, no, no, no. He says, they always do. They always disappoint you. Yes. No, 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 no. No, no. No, he he said, that'll do. That's that's good enough for my quote. Oh, yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and I I think, again, I think we as the audience are meant to be horrified by it. It's like, oh, like, wow, that's a very, like, extractive, exploitative... Thing well, that that character did at the very. I mean, end, right? what do you? Worse than that. Worse mm-hmm. than that. The the most horrific moment of this movie, or not the most, but one of the most, is uh, as the credits are rolling, we get the like Abu Ghraib right mm-hmm. shot yeah. of like, look, oh, we're next to the dead body. Take a picture yeah, of me exactly. for my yeah. Yeah. the Instagrammed murder of the president, which to me was like, what. Good night, everybody. Have fun. Uh, put <laughs> the your aristocrats. popcorn in the receptacles. <laughs> right. you know? It wasn't. Right. It's not. I'm not saying it's like cynical about journalism specifically. It's more like it is cynical about humanity, and I think that is that is kind of the tempo that Alex Garland tends to run in, which yeah, is fair. like that's fair. It's yeah. like it's like nothing. Not even journalism can stop the the inevitable march of humanity towards oblivion. There is this line early on in the movie where she's like, "I thought like shooting all those wars." Would make people not want to have wars here, but like it's stop apparently it here, done yeah. nothing, right? That's uh, and so that's that is a negative statement about humanity, not necessarily about journalism, but I think but that, also about journalism. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> but also about the inefficacy of journalism, right? Yes. And, and at the very the, end, when, yeah, he's like, yeah. when he leans down and is like, "Okay, that's good enough." That's like, what? Like, wow! That I was like, I was like, wow! That is such a cynical like bleak way of looking at like what these people do. It's yeah. exactly what. Stephen McKinley Henderson's character said, though, is that they he would disappoint you all, but it's all a, the despots. Yeah, well, right, but that's it's about, true. Yeah. He did say yeah. he would disappoint yeah, you. That's but true. Also, yeah. it's 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 but that's not, yeah, objectively that's... not good enough, right? Like it's not good enough. To, <laughs> no, I'm me sitting in the in the in, like oh, that I'll, that'll make a good headline for my article. But right. that, that's mm-hmm. bad journalism. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> right, right. Go ahead, kill him. We got it. We yeah, got the. Oh, we, we got, got the it. quote. Yeah, we it's got like, the quote. It's it, awful. Yeah, it's 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 all yeah. I, I, so it is an extremely bleak. I, again, again, I appreciate this spirited debate because we all have different feelings about it. But I think it's extremely bleak and cynical and negative about the journalistic practice as well. Or at I, least I about also its, agree. At least about its ability to mm-hmm. to kind of combat our worst demons. You know? It's about the people who also have the drive to do that too. Like I love Wagner Moro's character Joel, who's like so he is riding on the adrenaline of these things. Like when, right. when the, the attack is happening at night while they're all camping, it's like, I gotta, I gotta yeah, get over he's there. Like, he's like jonesing to like get, you know, oh, yeah. there's, something mean, that, addi- there's something addictive about like being yeah. in a war zone for this character. right? Or at yeah. least, yeah. Conveying that information. Like I, again, I, I still need to like fully ingest this movie, but I just found it really, really powerful. What it was doing. Like 
it's a yeah it's exploitative and extractive that the guy went up and like forced him to say something before all the soldiers yeah. killed him i don't sure. think he probably had time for an extensive sit down interview but maybe he could have tried <laughs> a little harder yeah. but that that is what you gotta go you gotta be a, the annoying prick who gets up and is like can you say something so we can report it to the world so we at least get your last words written down say that's an important thing that is it, an important is thing it? for people to do. I, I agree it? with you, but I agree with you about the part of the sit down. Like that's the, it's that's not plausible. They probably like, did not have but, that. Those but, soldiers but, but, were but ready. Like, yeah, but it's like who is that benefiting? Right? Is it does the world need that version of history? Like where you know, like I, he I don't begs know. Begs for his life at the end, right? Where know? he's begging for you know, I don't know. I, I, maybe it you does. Don't, I don't. Know. I mean, I think I th I would love to have direct reporting of what happened at the end of Hitler's bunker. You know, I right. would love to have direct reporting but, about yeah, what again, happened with that. These would that benefit us in any history? way? Would that would that make would, it less? We don't know. Would it, would it make it less likely that there's going to be another world war? You know, I like I, I'm saying, it, I don't think it does. Right. But so, anyway. I'm I'm saying the main thing is like I believe in information. That's ultimately right. all right. I can believe in, and I don't mm. know. I'm certainly let down by what humans have done with actual accurate information. But don't you think that years. that see this yeah. is my point is that don't you think that is a more interesting take? Like if, if the acquisition and dissemination of information actually led to this war, which let's be honest, it would, that's, it would. Where, that's the path mm. we're on. Is that's that the information you, you, itself yeah. is, but you bring your own history into you bring this it, movie. Right. Yeah. But I feel like the movie we, we're following these people whose job it is to stay distanced and to stay observational and to stay steeled against the actual emotion of whose side is what side. And, and, the, and the movie tries to do that as well. But by the end, it's like, what are we even saying about that process? What are we saying about staying observant and detached? Like the movie, yeah. I don't think has any teeth in that message of what I, I don't, I didn't come away from it going, wow those journalists xyz like right. they, it was literally just i'm on this ride and oh my god war is horrible and that was a horrible experience powerful moments that will be indelibly marked in my brain forever but mm -hmm. ultimately i don't think it said anything even not the thing that people wanted to say but just anything you I, know I, I would argue that it's like it's what i said which is that it, it's it's a dehumanizing experience to uh, observe war and that it like and ultimately is not particularly useful that's kind of like like the journalists have this very sort of i mean in the movie it's not particularly right, useful in, in reality Oh, I, there, oh, there are I, other I, situations. I, I yeah. agree. In reality, it's it's, yeah. it's it should be valued, but I'm saying like the journalists have this sort of fairly high-minded perspective on what their role is, but yep. then in the end, we see it's twisted for these other like it's twisted as like this I, propaganda. Again, I right? think I think so. When I say this movie is cynical, I think this movie is cynical in the way that I am cynical because I do <laughs> think that is the way the world works. That is. It's a journalist with these high-minded ideals of like trying to yeah, do the right absolutely. thing and disseminate information. And you look around and what has happened in this freaking planet for the past four years is an institutional failure of media and understanding and like of so many things. But it is exactly kind of what is happening in this movie, too. So I think I that's don't know. why I don't think I the related. movie connects that dot. Hmm. I don't think it does the last yeah. step of connecting that dot and making me think. Wow, the media it's you know, the, this endeavor, this whole quest. This right. really is a quest movie, right? Yeah. It's quest, like yeah. we gotta get to, you know, actually as I was watching it, I was like, this is not that different from that movie about the guys that wanted to interview George Lucas, you know, yeah, like before much, Star yeah, Wars. Yeah. Like it's basically How do you the get same to the ranch? Structure. Right. I mean, right. a little more violence in this one than the <laughs> yeah, than the George yeah. Lucas one. But um anyway, yeah. so it really is a quest movie. Yeah. And I feel mm -hmm. like the end of the quest. I didn't, it didn't question the validity hmm. of the quest. It didn't reinforce the necess the, the need for the quest. It just kind of ended with this weird, very bleak. I mean, I feel like I'm the only one that, that mm -hmm. has brought this up. Maybe it didn't land on you guys so much, but, but I mean, that, that like last credit. That's pretty credit bleak. Image, that's pretty bleak. Yeah. Dude, that, that was horrifying to me. Like through all yep. of this, through all of this, then we have this moment where, you know, we, we, we murdered the president, like high fives. And here's the pic. It was just so disturbing. And I'm like, yeah. what do I even take away from this? I think that's, well, I, yeah. so I, 
Yeah. I like sitting in that uncertainty, guys. Like, that's it. Like, yes, if this were to happen, that is exactly what it would. It would be the soldiers giving the high five for this trophy shot. Like, it looks like a trophy shot, basically. Yeah. So, um, so, so Jeff, I guess, like, none of the stuff I'm saying about, like, their their work has been twisted. Like, it's inherent. Journalism is inherently a hopeless endeavor. Or their work is being twisted for propaganda. Like, none of that, yeah. like connects for you like or I, or you, the movie did not make that explicit i don't for think your the, taste. I, right. I like that you are interpreting right. that i don't think the movie connected the last dot to mm. to land that feeling for me yeah. and okay. one thing i want to point fair. out like we were, we we're talking about the journalist being like detached and uh, kind of away from it what was really interesting is like no they're right there with the soldiers right it's not like they're in a telephone they're not taking telephoto pictures yeah. from half Oof. a mile yeah. away they're, they're embedded, there yeah. in the action and part of the movie is also the exploration of like, who the hell is crazy enough to do this? Dude. Mm -hmm. Right? And even like the soldiers, like just to be cool yes. with having just a rando person standing next to you with a camera, it's just nuts. Yeah, I mean, and the, there, there's like an understanding. There's like, okay, okay, this is actually, it's helpful to have this person here to document kind of what we're right. doing. And then there's a scene where um, Kaylee Spaney's character goes up to the guy who strung up those other dudes and she's having her first reaction to it. But Kirsten Dunst just tells him, can I take your picture? Yeah. Because ultimately like they people want to be proud of these things that they're doing and they want to convey that too. Um, I mean, this is not, this is not a movie of like neat tight, you know, neatly tied up messages. I just, I'm thinking about what I came away, away from this is, um, I don't know, is a powerful read of people who are like seeking the truth. And maybe they're not always doing it for the best reasons, you know, like Joel is basically an adrenaline chaser, but also he's trying to do something insane and impossible. And if they didn't do it, we would have no idea what happened in the White House, you know, after those soldiers went mm -hmm. down. Like, I there's think there's something there is inherently value valuable, right? Like, regardless of the impact or how he obtained it, in your opinion, Devinger, there's something like inherently valuable about yes, the fact that he's able to convey I that information. In information. Right? Like, yeah, that's yeah. that's the thing I believe, and I think it, we are better off knowing that, even if what the dude said was not good enough and was just kind of a bullshit, it would make a good headline. I still think we're better off knowing that rather than having the soldiers make up a fairy tale, you know? Hmm. Uh, we haven't talked about the most psychotic thing in this movie yet, and it's not Jesse Plemons' performance, which is mm. incredible. I mean, this is a guy who He's freaking so parachutes into these movies by these auteurs, like Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I'm here to see about civil a civil war. war. Yeah, I'm who's here to see it? about a civil war who's <laughs> doing it, you know? And, uh, and makes the movie way better. Like, he's just like, wow, delivering on a whole other level. No, the most psychotic thing in this movie is uh, that someone would be using actual physical film to shoot this. That's like, <laughs> I wanted to have this conversation. Yeah. Is that more psychotic than digital? Like, if you don't know this, the infrastructure you have of like, you don't know if you're going to get power. You don't know if you're going to be able to disseminate this information. The, is the that necessarily more psychotic? The issue with um, film. I, you so don't I need have, battery. You don't need batteries for a film camera, right? It's true. I have or, so or I have depending. physically yeah. I have physically yeah. developed film myself and like I made my own prints. And the I issue remember with, your dorm room, Dave, where you would often have prints of just port self portraits along yeah. the wall. <laughs> yeah. Dozens and dozens of portraits yeah. of Dave's own face. Yeah. Just the a issue, dark room, just, just creepy. A dark room. <laughs> uh, uh, closed pins on wires of Dave's own portrait. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, I would hope that these photographers are carrying like spare batteries and yeah, hard drives yeah. up the wazoo before they trek to dangerous territory. Uh, but the issue I found is, that fascinating. Yeah. The, yeah. The issue is you need to have, uh, like you need to be in a lightless in yes. light free environment to develop uh, film. And it's just really hard to guarantee that you will be able like, it's harder to get a light free environment that you can develop film in then in my opinion to make sure you have a bunch of batteries and hard sure. drives but, you know but like Jesse Jesse was doing or um was doing the thing in in like a bottle she was developing negatives no, 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 in I, a, yeah i know yeah, so the way yeah. it works the way it works is you remove the the film from the camera in a light free mm -hmm. environment right. and then in the dark with just by physical memory transfer it into that it's a like, like a, a canister where you then put yeah. the developing chemical inside so yeah. it, it's the step before it got into the canister that is that's the, the hard part right. yeah I, w I was thinking about that i was thinking like is this the best way we have digital cameras <laughs> we have infinite storage uh, I, it's I don't almost necessarily as know. outlandish as the map that he released of what the world, the yeah. United States, but also like, like I love the the little. <laughs> is, I didn't. I guess this accessory actually.
actually exists, but a film reader that can actually let you see the film yeah, on yeah, your you, phone. That's, that's the thing where you can take I a like negative. That process. You can go buy yeah. that right now. It's like it's a thing where you you put this um, this device mm-hmm. up to your smartphone camera, and then you can see what the pictures look like. So yeah. that's pretty cool. If you have negatives, it's, it's if you it's have negatives. Cool. Yeah. I noticed like Jesse had two cameras. Jesse had that film camera, but she also has a, has a digital. And like any true photographer, they're like flipping. They're flipping yeah. between different. Yeah, you got to use what's things. best for the situation. So. I just found that fascinating. She even made time for film. Yeah, yeah. I think the entire it's complete nonsense. In my opinion. All of yeah. the methodology <laughs> was was the entire the entire notion that we're we know what we'll do. We'll drive to the White House <laughs> and and, and yeah, he'll give us an go. interview. What is, what is the go. plan? What, what is the plan? What is the plan? <laughs> He'll give us an interview. Why? Well, it's his last. That's the only thing he can yeah, do. What? It's the only thing he can do. Yeah, he'll feel compelled to do it. It's and if like, we're there first, like yeah. the whole notion is like, this is the stupidest I don't need, idea. I don't need the backstory for the war or anything. I would love to hear more about the thought process behind the plan. Like, how do you, how do you actually, con- like, yeah. this is a heist movie, basically. Right. It's a road movie. Like the, it's a heist movie. Yeah. Those other two uh, knuckleheads in the other van are like, we heard you're going to the White House. We're going to, like, you're the only people, you had to leak the idea of going to the white like that's where the guy is why yeah. would no one think to do that but I, you i like mm-hmm. that we have more like that stuff is more unbelievable than the civil war stuff right like, <laughs> yeah yeah that hey stuff, listen that's yeah. uh, that's gonna happen <laughs> yeah we, we are very close to it right, so right yeah and um, also you know I, I, you gotta suspend your disbelief uh, and i did but the the it's very cool that moment where like he's leaving and they're going and they the cars peel out and stop them and they get out of the car and they murder yeah. everybody and it's like so now the path to the actual White House is just quite open and clear. There's just no, nothing standing in your way from waltzing in through the front door. Okay. All right. Okay, movie. I don't believe that for a second, but okay. <laughs> you know, there's also a lot of questions about, like, the aesthetics of it. Like, would the Secret Service be wearing suits? You know, still, like, would, yeah. would, they, would they not, would they still be wearing, everyone still be wearing civilian clothes and in a war zone like that? You know, it's, it, it's. Uh, I don't know that that much thought went into those components of it, is all I'm saying. You but know? Uh, I will say that, but basically the final 30 minutes of this movie, perhaps the most aggressive sound design I have heard <laughs> since uh, Black Hawk Down, mm. maybe? Like I just like did you guys yeah, did you guys watch an IMAX or Dolby? I or did. No. Yeah, our screening was in IMAX, so yeah. I mean it was LIMAX, but it was uh, yeah, yeah, very intense audio. <laughs> yeah. Like the the gunshots. I saw you were you were responding to tweets about this, Jeff. But yeah. the gunshots feel like gunshots. Like I think one of the most defining aspects of the movie Heat is like the major shootout sequence was sound designed in a way to feel like those shots were real. Like they're big and loud and per, per, like super percussive. And this movie just does this all throughout whenever any weapons or guns or anything is going off. And I feel like that viscerality of it also felt real. Like, I don't know. This movie yeah. felt like you were basically living through these explosions. There was nothing that felt uh, fun about the the war stuff. I mean, there yeah. are movies where the the war stuff can feel kind of, fun and exciting and this felt dreadful and awful mm-hmm. and bleak yeah yep. it's there's so many things about this movie and its release that i just think are weird like there's a whole ad campaign around it and it's like see it in imax <laughs> civil war see it in imax see it in imax i just think that's like inherently <laughs> odd you know uh, maybe it's just me but it's just like oh the 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 country being you know, self-immolating and leaving itself in tatters. See, See it on the biggest floor. That's, partially, <laughs> See it that's partially why I was like, I don't think we need this movie at all. That's why the trailers were turning me off. Why the initial right. pitch for this movie was turning me off. And then like Alex Garland makes it interesting. So, yeah. yeah, I think at the end of the day, I am still torn on like what it's trying to say about photojournalism. Like there, that, like maybe this is my point. There's mm-hmm. some components of it that are worth it still. You know, I don't know. I, I, That's I've my been, point. Like, very, it's like it doesn't yeah. land any any kind of. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Again, yeah. I think we all liked the movie mm-hmm. and found it worthwhile. Just, just I think a, we like as it a more cinematic than cinematic experience. Yeah. It is yeah. like it is undeniably thrilling and it's yes. undeniably exciting. And, and there are undeni- you know some of well the sequences. Right? Yeah. Some of the sequences we've we've touched on a couple of them. The the weird Christmas land where the snipers are having a yeah. sniper off. Yeah. Like. Those some of those sequences, like how she's laying there and like just looks at the blades of grass for a second, and the you know the the sequence with Jesse Plemons, of course, the the sequence at the at the gas station with the guy, it, it, all of it, like there there's so much in the movie that is just incredible, absolutely masterfully 
you, you, yeah. suspenseful and intense and makes you think, but you know, it's, it's an unruly beast, this movie. And I, I think yeah. that's part of the reason Devendra loves it. You love unruly one, one beasts. thing. Yeah. I love unruly beasts. Um, also one thing we haven't mentioned is, um, this movie was shot in a really interesting way. It was shot on the DJ DJI Ronin 4d, which is this really interesting camera that can both be a shaking cam and be a steady cam, mm. depending on what you feel like. I don't know if you have thoughts on that, Dave, but it seems fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's really cool to see, uh, like th that is a, a, a an available device that you can very easily buy. Yeah. You know, like and it's just That's a cool. prosumer we, camera. We saw yeah. the creator was filmed with uh, a seven FX uh, FX uh, threes, I believe, yeah. it's Sony FX threes, yeah. and this is shot with the Ronin forty, and it's just cool that like um, you can produce cinematic style mm -hmm. images. You need a lot of other stuff like great sound design and great actors and you know great lighting and cinematography but like um the technology is just really accessible now and i think the movie looks really good it looks like, it, well it looks good but it looks grainy at uh, times too it, it looks like uh very digitally to my yes to my, and, it and reminds I, me of like I, the early michael mann stuff i was just watching like, it's really like dark. ex machina and that movie also looks like it like that movie does not look like a shot on film it looks like it was shot on a digital camera and yeah. this movie also has that appearance as well the the dark um, scenes especially like the first time they go up with soldiers up a building like all the shadows are just like digital grain right and that's because of the way this was shot but i still it was a little distracting but at the same time i think the the way they shot this thing this is the, what you can do with the ronin 4d is just kind of fascinating to me and like it's cool that Alex Garland is enough of a you know gearhead to even yeah. think about like that specific thing about shooting this movie a little differently than a typical film. Yeah. Every time we think about Alex, I think about Alex Garland making movies. I always think he's like just reluctantly making every decision. Okay, okay. I guess we can go with the Ronan Ford because he just doesn't. He seems like in all his interviews, he doesn't seem very happy about making movies. Right. He's just like <laughs> I, yeah, which is he, why he, I was not surprised when right. he, it was vaguely like he would yeah. retire from directing, and now that's not necessarily true. But you know, we'll see. Well, guys, uh, this has been a long and varied conversation about Civil War, and obviously, we all like we all took different things away from it. We all like interpreted things differently about this it. This is good. Uh, that's what good art you know? is. And yeah, you could argue I agree with that. Good art, and that's what, that's why that. at the end of the day, despite everything I've said negative about the movie, I still think you should check it out. Like, it is a movie that people are going to be talking about, and there's some interesting things. That, things that it does are interesting things that it doesn't do are interesting to talk about you yeah, know so it's like yeah. it's worth checking out and at the end of the day it is really impressive that alex garland is still making movies we hope he continues doing it for a long time to go thank you so much for watching this video of the film cast check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like subscribe and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future you can also go to the filmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes and support this podcast at patreon.com slash film podcast, where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible.